Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord God, for another beautiful Sunday. And we are at Christ Church. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone watching online. Father, just before I get started, we thank you for another new day. We thank you for the precious gift of life. Thank you, Father, for the life force that you have given us, the Zoe, the life force. Thank you, Father, for the warm blood that's coursing through our veins and your oxygen coming into our lungs, Father. Thank you for the mobility that we have. We thank you, Father, for a new day. We welcome you into Christ Church. We welcome you to this place. And we thank you for the promise that you have given us where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, said I will be in the midst. So we thank you for that promise. We thank you, acknowledge your presence because you said that you would be here. We believe it by faith. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you will, grab your Bibles and let's get ready to get into God's holy word. We thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning into Christ Church or tuning into Mental Morpho. We do not take it for granted. We are in our, our new location now, and, and God has blessed us with a different location, and we will be here until God moves us to a permanent location, but we are grateful. This video, the title of this message today is we're going to be talking about fornication. We're going to be talking about the flesh. It feels good to sin. It feels really, really good when we disobey God, when we sin. It feels good. There is pleasure in sin. There is pleasure in sin. What is fornication? The Greek word for fornication is porneo. Porneo just means to commit fornication. Okay? And to fornicate is a, another word. Pornea. Pornea. That's where we get the word pornography from. That's where we get the word pornographic from. That's where we get the word pornography. Uh, just pornographic stuff. It's, it's dealing with the flesh because it feels good to appease the flesh. And the pornography industry is $12 billion. That's more revenue than combined with NBC, ABC, CBS combined together because we love to gratify the flesh. It feels good when we sin. And there is pleasure in sin. A whole sometimes there can be a whole lot of pleasure in sin. But the Bible says there is pleasure in sin for a season. Yes, yeah, God will forgive you for all of your sins. And He has forgiven us, those who have accepted Christ. He has forgiven us for our sins. He has forgiven us for those sins, but some of us still will reap consequences of our sins. He forgive you for the sins, but he does not always remove the consequences. He does not always remove the consequences. Let's get into this message. It feels good to gratify the flesh. It feels good when we appease our flesh. It feels good to sin, especially to those whose hearts are unregenerated by the Holy Spirit. Those who do not know Christ, those who do not, do not know God, it feels good to sin. Okay, for those who love Christ, it feels terrible. It's a bad feeling. As a matter of fact, I hate sin. I even hate my own sin. Why you hate sin so much, Pastor Andrews? Because it has cost me so much in my own personal life. It has cost. Sin comes with consequences. It comes with great consequences. The wages of sin is death. The wages, what you mean your wages? That's what you get paid. That's what you get paid on your job. You get paid, you sin, you work, you work, you work. When you get your paycheck, it yields death. Spiritual death and sometimes physical death. The wages of sin is always death. You sow to the flesh, you're gonna reap of the flesh, corruption. You sow to the spirit, you will reap of the spirit, life everlasting. It's good to sow to the spirit. Do good things so good can come back to you. Amen? Amen. Listen, in the world they call that karma. So you do, you got good karma. It's no such thing as karma. This book does not represent, say anything about no karma. It's the law of sowing and reaping. Galatians chapter 6 will tell you that whatsoever any man sow, that shall he also reap. I have sown to the flesh. 
and I have reaped of the flesh. There is pleasure in sin. <laughs> a lot of pleasure in sin, but also it's very, very costly. The consequences of sins, take it slow, Pastor Andrews. The consequences of your sins, my sins, the consequences always outweigh the pleasure. Let me say that again. The consequences of the sin always, always, always outweigh the pleasure. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a trick of the enemy. Make you feel good, but you got to pay the piper. God will forgive you, like I said, and those who are in Christ, God has forgiven us. He has forgiven us. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you will, turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And Hebrews chapter 11, that called, Hebrews chapter 11 is called a faith chapter or the, he, the hall of faith and or walk of faith. It's, it's just about faith. Verse number 24, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. When he grew up a certain age, he didn't want to have anything to do with Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter. He did not want to be identified with being affiliated with Pharaoh. He did not want to be affiliated with Egypt. Okay? He became to his identity. He wanted to identify with the people of God, the Hebrews. Okay? Later known as the Jews. Verse number 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Yes, he wanted to suffer. The people of God and God does make a dis distinguish. He does distinguish against for the differences. Yes, God said these are my people. My people. Okay? And they, the Hebrews, they were be in, uh, uh, in chattel slavery. They were being brutalized. They were being humiliated. They were being degraded. They were being uh, destroyed. And they were being forced to work on the hard labor with cruel taskmasters. But choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The pleasures of sin. Moses said, you know what? All this rich, all this wealth, all this everything that I could have he comes from a royalty. He was in the palace. He had the best of everything, the best education, the best school, the best clothes, the best money, the best everything you could get because he was Pharaoh's daughter's son by, the, you know, the, the story when they found the baby in the basket. And it's just a beautiful story. But Moses, he came to age. He said, I don't want to be affiliated with that. He said he would rather want to suffer with the people of God. Number 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the war, reward. Moses said, you know what? And the Bible says right here in the, new, in, in the book of Hebrews, it said esteeming the reproach of Christ. What does Moses know about Christ? He knew that the anointed one would come. The Christ is the anointed one. Later known as Jesus the Christ. Okay? So, esteeming the reproach of Christ, that's greater riches. Greater riches is in, are in Christ than anything that you can have in the world. It's greater riches in Christ. Man, oh my goodness, I wish someone could have given me a drum roll right there, but hey, that's, that's, that's something there. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7 will tell you, it says, be not deceived. Be not deceived, people. God is not mocked. That word, in a Greek word for that was not mocked. It's, it's, um, it's mukarizo. It just means don't toot your nose up at God. He's nothing to be taken lightly, to be mocked. It literally means that just, you know, toot your nose up in the air at God. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow of that shall he also reap. Whatever you sow, you're going to get it back. You're going to get it back. It's coming back to you. It'll come back to you when you least expect it from the people you expect it least from. Always. 
and it, invariably it's going to come back when you least expecting it whether you so good or whether you so evil when you so good good is going to come back to you when you least expect it or when you least when you're not even looking for it you so evil it's going to come back to you it's going to it doesn't always be fair it doesn't always be equal it doesn't say there's no there's no equality amount of the level if you're so good good come back to you you're so evil evil is coming back to you be not deceived be not mocked god is not mocked for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption oh my goodness you sow to the flesh it's going to come back to you corrupt okay but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting i have sown to my flesh and it came back to me in corruption it felt good but the wages oh my goodness the the, the consequences of sin always out Weigh the pleasure. You can take that to the bank. The wages of sin is death. Okay? And when you sow to the Spirit, you reap of the Spirit. And when you, you serve God, and you do different things in the Spirit, it's going to come back to you from the Spirit. Whether it's good, holiness, righteousness, when you do something, you give someone an encouraging word, you prophesy to someone, you pray for someone, you show them the love of Christ, someone's going to show you the love of Christ. Someone's going to show me the love of Christ. That's how it works. Oh my goodness. When you sow to the flesh, it causes broken homes, it causes broken marriages, it causes interruptions in the house, in the families, when we sow to our flesh. When we do things other than how God has prescribed them, it destroys marriages, it destroys schools, churches, and individual lives when we sow to our flesh. Yeah, it feels good. Shoot some man, I, I used to shoot people to bird out of drive down highway, somebody pull me over and I shoot them in the finger or do something, I would do it. Ah, it felt good to do that. But people would kill you for that. People would kill you for that. One day I was walking down the street. <laughs> I was walking down the street and a lady came down on the school bus and she was kind of close to me. I shot a bird at her and she saw me. I saw her looking in the mirror. The lady went all the way up, turned around, came all the way back facing me. She hit a horn and she shot a bird back at me. I said, wow, she did all of that to get me back. It felt good to do that. It felt good. It did not feel good to receive it back, but it felt good. If you will, turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 in your Bibles or in your mobile devices. Romans chapter 8. We're talking about there is pleasure in sin. There is pleasure in sin. It feels good. It feels good when we sin. Sometimes it feels really good when we sin. But is it really worth it? When you hate, you cannot depart from what you don't hate. If you do not hate sin, you can never depart from it. But it costs so much. My sins, your sins, the sins of the entire world, it costs God to create him a body. That body was Christ. God had, this in Hebrews, it said, Thou hast created a body. You have prepared a body for me. God had to come, get in the human body, be an ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world. There was no other way that sin could be atoned for except that God had to send his only begotten son, Christ. That body was the body of God in a human body. Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he has he uh, declared God. No man has seen God at any time. Jesus Christ has declared him. John chapter 1 tell you that. That Jesus has declared him. What in the world? That word is ex geomahi. In the Greek, Jesus has declared him. What does that mean? Jesus walked it out. He showed us who was God. He showed us what it was to be holy. Be full of virtue and power. 
oh my, in righteousness, spotless, a man full of sorrows, man full of compassion. That was just, that's God incarnate. But anyway, Romans chapter eight, verse number five: For they are in after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things after the spirit. What in the world are you saying? <laughs> if you in the flesh, all you do is fleshy stuff. You think flesh. You're in the carnal. You want to overeat. You want to lie. You want to curse. You want to be mean. You want to do cruel things. You want to hate people. If you are a fleshy, carnal person, that's all you do. I know some people, every time you speak with them, they cursing. They, they, they're very... Um, they, they're cruel in their language, their speech. They're very hostile. It comes out they're, because they're in the, in the flesh. They're carnal. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. You think about your flesh. What can make me feel good, look good, sound good? Make me, make, it's all about yourself. Make you carnal. Make you lust, full of lust. See how many women I can sleep with. How many, how many men I can get. How much money I can get from guys. How much, whatever it is. If you're carnally minded, it leads to death. There are people who, who've died just recently over a few dollars. Carnally minded, thinking about money. For the, the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money is evil. The love of money, the love of money, it kills. It kills nations. It causes nations to, to squander other nations. It causes colonialism. It causes murder. It causes uh, oppression. The love of money. It causes so much death. To be carnally minded is death. Okay? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. When you are carnal and your mind, your thinking is enmity against God. That word is extra. It's hostility. A carnal mind is hostility towards God. If you're carnal in your flesh, thinking about everything that feels good to you, what I want, you want to gratify the flesh, you want to make yourself feel good, you're always in the flesh, doing fleshy stuff, fleshly things. Make yourself feel good. Getting into the flesh. Yeah, with this masturbation, getting high. Whatever you want to call it, whatever it is. When you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. Verse number seven. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. What are you saying, Pastor Andrews? It's enmity against God. It's, war, it's hostility. It's hostility. If I'm hostile against God, who do you think is going to win? When you when you are carnal in your mind, you setting yourself at odds against God. You are making yourself a hostile enemy of God just by being carnally minded. We're supposed to be spiritually minded. Think on these things. Think on the things which are above, not of the things on the earth. Not to be desiring the world. Not being fleshy, pleasing yourself. Fornicating, getting high, masturbation, whatever it is that make you feel good in your flesh, in your mind, about just, just gratifying in your flesh. It's hostile, it's enmity against God. For to be carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. You cannot be. If you are carnal in mind, always want to curse somebody out, tell somebody how you feel. You want to be rebellious. You want to be hostile, angry. Whatever it is, you want to be carnally minded. It's not subject. You cannot obey God. It's not subject to the law of God. It's not subject. What does it mean? You're not, you can't come under the authority of God. You can't come under the authority of the word of God. Because you're carnally minded. You cannot be. And you cannot please God. So then, number eight. Somebody give me a drum roll. Thank you for that. 
Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Number eight. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It didn't say you will not. <laughs> say you cannot. Now, I'm in the flesh preaching right now. If I'm doing this in the flesh, God won't be pleased. God will not be pleased with it. If I offer him my praise in the flesh, if I offer him worship, if I'm preaching in the flesh, God will not be pleased. He will not be satisfied. You're just speaking in the air. You're wasting time, but it's not being pleasant before God. That's what we want to do. We want to please him. Amen, somebody? We want to please God. We want our praise, our worship, our lives, everything we offer to God, we want him to be pleased with it. I want God to be pleased with my life while I'm at work, while I'm at home. I want him to be pleased with my life. And you should want God to be pleased with you. For they, they that are in the flesh cannot. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Give me a drum roll. Come on, come on. Give me a drum roll. Thank you. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. He said, ye are not in the spirit. If. He said, if. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. If the spirit of God dwell in you, you are not in the flesh. If the spirit of God dwell in you. Okay. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you have never accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, that means you do not even have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not come in the unclean temple. He will not come into a place that's not accepted Christ. You cannot accept Christ. And you cannot have the Holy Spirit without Jesus Christ. <laughs> you cannot have Christ without the Holy Spirit. You cannot. But you are not in the flesh if the spirit, if, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, in me. The Holy Spirit inhabit us. Those who are in Christ, Christ is in us. How is Christ going to be in you? Through his spirit, through the Holy Spirit of God. Number 10, say number 10 again. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I did a video about that. Christ comes into us, okay? We're dead. We were dead in trespasses and sins. When Christ comes in, we have new life. We have his righteousness. Christ's righteousness has been imputed upon us. So not because we're self-righteous. No, we have his righteousness and we have his life. We have the life of God, the life of Christ through the spirit. Being carnal causes spirit to death. Amen. It causes us to be hostile to, towards God. And which we profess to love. We profess to love God. But when we're carnal in mind and we're in the flesh, we are at odds against God, a holy God. Amen. There is pleasure in sin. There is pleasure in sin. Hallelujah. 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 Galatians chapter 5. If you will turn to Galatians chapter 5. Start at verse number 16. And this is an imperative command. This is not a suggestion. It's not an idea. This I say. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. We live in the spirit. We pray in the spirit. We have our being in the spirit. We go to work in the spirit. We drive to work in the spirit. We're in the spirit when we're at work. We're at spirit in the spirit when we're at home. We're in fellowship with each other. When we in, in wherever we are, we walk in the spirit. We live in the spirit. We live in the spirit. We walk in the spirit. Okay? That's why I said sometimes you might not, because we're in these bodies, you know, these human flesh bodies, you know, sometimes we may not always be in the spirit, but it's an imperative command to walk in the spirit. 
I say, I always say we cannot in the marriage, in the relationship, both of us cannot be in the flesh at the same time. Somebody's going to have to be in the spirit. If not, we're going to have problems. We're going to be problems. We have to be in the spirit. This I say then, walk in the spirit. It's imperative. It's a command. Walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Keep your hearts on the Lord. Keep our hearts on the Lord. I keep my heart on focus on the Lord. It's easy to get in the flesh. Why? Because it feels good. It feels good to have be heard, to get your, your, your message, your opinion across. It feels good. It feels good when we express how we feel. Even when it's in the flesh. But that's not, those are not the ways of God. Number 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. It's a war. It's, the, the flesh and the spirit, they're war, constantly warring against each other. My flesh wants to serve God. I mean, my flesh wants to go and do whatever I want to do. My spirit wants to serve God. We yield to the spirit. We yield to the spirit. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. The things that you want. You don't want to. You don't do what you want to do. Oh, my goodness. Stay in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Stay in it. Live in it. When you watch the Internet, while you're in your entertainment, when you're in your recreation, stay in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Live in the spirit. Enjoy their sweet fellowship. Quantanil. There is sweet fellowship when we experience God and we have a continuous relationship with God. It's every day you're speaking to him like you're speaking to your best friend, your father. Oh, my goodness. But number 18, but if we be led by the spirit, if ye be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Thank God we're not under the law because we'll all be dead. <laughs> we'll all be condemned. Let me say that. We would all perish. Number 19, now the works of the flesh. Take it slow, Pastor Andrews. The works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. If you are an adulterer, you are against God. God is against you. Okay? If you will commit adultery, any shape, form, or fashion, if you are married you need, and you are having a relationship, sex relationship with someone else, or you, 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 you're being unfaithful, God detests that. And you sin against your own body, you sin against the church, you sin against God, and God will hold you accountable for that. It's pleasure in sin. The consequences always, always, always outweigh the pleasure. Always. These manifest the flesh, works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, porneo. Okay, porneo. Fornication, you're not married, but you're having sex. With any kind of sex, any kind of sexual activity outside of marriage is fornication. Okay? And Jesus said, if a man looketh upon a woman and lusts after her in his heart, he already committed adultery with her. So you gotta be, you gotta be in the spirit. I, I, I had to really, really focus on make sure that I'm not looking at I'm gonna look at women, I'm gonna look. I love the beauty of it, but I cannot afford to lust in my heart. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. He said, uncleanness, being unclean. When you're doing, pro, you're doing profane things, you're being a filthy, nasty person, you're doing unclean acts. It's unclean. That's how these are manifest. What you're doing is in the flesh. And long as you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. If I'm in the flesh, I cannot please God. You cannot. You will not please God. Somebody say amen. amen. Lasciviousness. 
There's this outrageous conduct. You're out in the restaurant, and you're knocking over chairs, knocking over tables, you're angry, and you want everyone to know it. Or you're in a party somewhere, you're going off, you want to fight, you're loud, you're arrogant, you're hostile towards people. That's lasciviousness. It's not good. You're violent. Lewdness. Lewd conduct. Something, you, oh, that's just shocking conduct. It, it's, that's in the flesh. Idolatry. Idolatry. Some people, their cars are an idol. There are some people who will shoot you, blow your brains out if you scratch their car. There are some people who have artwork from all over parts of the world and their houses, and that's, they worship this stuff. It's like a god. You cannot touch it. You can't move it. You got to be careful with this artwork that's imported from different places around the world. So if you go to a place and you say, I want to buy this. Who is this? Oh, this is the God of fertility. This is the God of this. This is the God of the afterlife. This is the God of, of man, leave that crap alone. You don't need it. And there are our brothers and sisters, our friends who are Roman Catholics. They have medallions of dead saints. With the, the Roman Catholic Church has uh, uh, named them saints. Okay? And they, they, these, you wear it. As long as you wear that medallion, you have graces. That's idolatry. That's in the flesh. And God will hold you accountable for that. Witchcraft. Yes, even in this era, the day, modern day, what we live in right now, there are still people practicing witchcraft. What do you mean, Pastor Andrew? Yeah. There are still people biting back heads off, chicken blood, trying to do hexes on people, voodoo, witchcraft, root workers, all that evil crap. There are still people doing that. God hates it. And we, well, you say, well, I'm not doing that. No one's doing that kind of stuff. Well, what about you when you're trying to manipulate people? Manipulation is a form of witchcraft. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as God hates it like he hates witchcraft. And God will deal with it as such. Hatred. These are manifest. If you're doing this, you are in the flesh. He's telling you very poignantly. What is it? Say, I'm in the flesh. You want to know what it is? Hatred. If you hate someone because of the color of their skin, you hate the way they, their, 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 their ethnicity the national or origin, whatever it may be reason you hate people, any kind of hatred. The Bible calls hatred murder. <laughs> it, hatred is God, look, if you hate, you are a murderer. God detests it. It feels good though. You wanna hate someone because of they did something. You wanna hate a whole group of people because you have uh, conceptions or ideas about them. You think God's gonna, allow you to enter to his heaven, to his eternal kingdom? No. He said, get away from me. I don't know you. You're a murderer. Amen. Variance. Strife. Causing strife. Causing division. God hates it. He hates that. Emulations. What's emulation? What in the world, world is that? You always want to be against somebody. You're eager to be at, at odds. You're eager to, to disagree. You're eager. God hates that. He hates it so much. That's being in the flesh. Wrath, being angry. The wrath of man never works the righteousness of God. When you're wrathful, you're going to be in the flesh and you're going to yield consequences of the flesh by being wrathful, full of anger, the book of Ecclesiastes says that anger resides in the bosom of fools. If you have an anger problem, you can't control your anger. It says the anger resides in the bosoms of fools. <laughs> take that how you want to take it. You're watching that. But if you have a problem with anger, you need to get, in, you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the love of Jesus Christ. You cannot have the Holy Spirit living in you and be full of wrath, full of anger. You cannot. They can't. They, they, they're, they're, they're diametrically opposed to one another. They cannot inhabit the same 
temple. Amen. Strife always causing division, strife, seditions, strife, divisions, just causing division, dividing families, dividing people on the job, gossiping about people, just coming in, causing chasms with people. That's that's that, that's seditions and heresies. There are so many heresies going on right now. Heresies. Whether it's the love of money, was it preaching about preachers always teasing you how you're going to get blessed, how you're going to get this, how you're going to get to the next level, how you're going to get your wealth, how you're going to get this. Man, there's a lot of heresies going on. A lot of heresies about Jesus Christ, about uh, like our friends who were Jehovah's Witnesses said when Jesus, and when he was crucified, he died. Yeah, he rose again. But it was a vapor. He rose invisible. And he came back invisible. Man, that's a heresy. The Bible said every eye is going to see him. When he comes back, every eye is going to see. Every eye is going to see. Heresies, so many heresies. I like our friends who are Roman Catholics. The heresy, great heresies say, Mary. Yeah, they believe in Jesus. They believe he was the son of God. They believe he died on the cross for our sins. But they say that Mary, Jesus' mother, she is the mediatrix of all graces. You got to come to her to get graces. This Bible never mentioned graces. If you're a Roman Catholic, you out there watching, it never mentions graces. Grace came through the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a free gift for everyone who accepts Christ by faith. You accept him by faith, you come boldly to the throne of grace. You don't have to worry about getting uh, temporal indulgences, partial indulgences, plenary indulgences. None of these indulgences. Grace is a free gift. Those are heresies, people. Those are heresies. Our friends who are uh, 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 in the Mormons. Joseph Smith said, I did more for humanity than anyone else ever did, including Jesus Christ. That's a heresy. That is a heresy. Oh, my goodness. Getting some, some your, your, your gospel. And Joseph Smith's second vision, he saw, he claimed he saw God in Jesus but then later on, his second vision, he had another vision, came, an uh, angel came, angel Moroni, gave him some golden plates. He translated and came up with a whole new translation, a whole new gospel. Galatians chapter 1, there's no new gospel. There's no another gospel. He said, even if we or an angel give you any other message, let him be accursed. That means let him be damned. That's a different gospel. It's a heresy. Those are heresies. And there's so many, so many heresies. Those are in the flesh. And they cannot please God. They will not please God. I don't care how clean your button-down shirt is. You press it, you iron it, put your little name tag on, go and knocking on doors. You're in the flesh. It's a different gospel, a different spirit, and a different Christ. Amen. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, being drunk, revelings, and such the like of which I tell you before. He, just, he says it goes on and on. He said, as I have told you in time past, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. He said, flee from me. I don't know you. Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I don't know you. We don't want to hear that when we stand before Christ. No one wants to hear that when we stand before Christ. Amen. And he said, number 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Love is the greatest. The fruit of the, and he mentioned love first. There's a lot of attributes of the fruit of the spirit. But the apostle Paul gave us love is the first one. <laughs> Jesus said, by the love that you have for one another, that's how men are going to know you're my disciples. Not because you can speak in tongues. 
He could have said, you speak in tongues, everybody going to know you my disciples. You prophesy, that's how people going to know you my followers. He didn't do that, did he? Because you can pray, lay hands on the sick, and they get healed. That's how people are going to know you my disciples. He didn't say that. That was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful gifts and wonderful works of the Holy Spirit. But he said, for the love, <laughs> the love that we have for one another. That's how men are going to know you my disciples. Because you love one another. You love one another as I have loved you. That's how. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Joy. Are you joy? Do you have joy in your life? Or do you walk around looking like you've been sucking on lemons all day? Do you have joy? Is there a presence of joy in your life? When people see you into your presence, do you, are you joyful? Or are you sorrowful all the time? You want to have a pity party every time someone see you? You always got some bad news about your health, always bad news about this. Walk in the spirit. We walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Somebody said, well, you know what? You know why I never have any joy? Because I'm dying. I got good news for you. All of us are dying. All of us, you are closer to death today than you've ever been close to death in your whole entire life. Every one of us. A one heartbeat away from eternity. All of us. All of us. Each of us. Walk in the spirit. Have joy of life. It's easy to say that when you're healthy, when you're strong, but I'm, this message was someone out there. All of this is temporary. These bodies, this life, everything you can touch, see, taste, and feel is temporary. We will be in the presence of eternity forever and ever. If you're watching this somewhere and you're in a hospital bed, we pray for you that God will send, send healing your way. But if he does not send healing for you the way that you want to receive it in your natural, in your body, just know that we're going to have bodies not made. We're going to have bodies, eternal bodies. We're going to have regenerated bodies. We're going to have glorified bodies just like Christ. This is all temporary. And I know we all want to be happy. But the joy that you have, even if it's a little bit, that is the fruit of the Spirit. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's a sign. It's fruit that you produce when you have the Spirit. You don't produce it. it it's a fruit. It, it, it's, it's automatic. It's automatic. Okay, we're coming to a close here. We have to have, to have a part two to this message. But the fruit of the Spirit is joy, peace. Jesus said, peace I give unto you. Not the peace, not the, uh, what, like the world. He said, I give you my peace. Peace. In the Old Testament, the word is shalom. In the New Testament, I love the Greek word. It's irene. It's the peace of God, man. Have peace in your life. Okay, so what you got fired? Okay, I still have peace. God will provide for me. My father will provide for me. Your car break down. You still have peace. God is a provider. We have peace in our heart. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. But those who are followers of Christ, we have peace. We know where our help comes from. We know our source. God is our source. Everything else is a resource. Long suffering. There's some people long suffering. They love Christ. The long suffering, whether it could be in your body, long suffering dealing with people as we're growing. You want people to be long suffering with you. You may be an employer. Be long suffering with some people. Teach them. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, and you are an employer. Grow people. I know it's about money. We got to be productive, but 
this calling you the word of God telling you to be long suffering not Pastor Andrews the word of God this is a fruit that's the fruit of the spirit that you are long suffering it's easy to chop somebody off that's easy to do cut them off <laughs> somebody said something on Facebook you don't like a friend of yours who is a child of God cut them off <laughs> no long suffering long suffering marriage we have to be able to put up with people long suffering long suffering amen. gentleness <laughs> amen wife goes amen on that one gentleness and I have to learn to be gentle she's going to say amen again amen. learn to be gentle it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit it's fruit goodness just doing good stuff, man. We don't do good stuff to get saved. There's nothing you can do to be saved. We do it because we are saved. We do it. It's a fruit. It's automatic. Because Christ is in you. You have a new life. And faith. Sola fide. Latin term. Faith. You got to believe. You got to believe in God. You got to believe that God's going to bring you out from where you are. You got to believe he's going to take you to the next level. You have to believe that God is in your best interest by faith, having faith in God. I didn't say put your faith in man, having faith, being able to believe beyond what you can see, hope, touch, what you can touch, taste and feel, beyond your senses, had to have faith. These are fruit, meekness. I just, it didn't say weakness, it said meekness. Being meek, not high-minded, not arrogant. Not exalting yourself above people. Not condescending people. Looking down on people. But being meek. It's a temperance. Temperance is just, just having, being able to put up with some, some people going to make you mad. People going to do things, but you got to have some self-control. Temperance. It feels good to sin and, and get in the flesh, but it's, we're called to have temperance. Amen. He said, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. If you belong to Christ, you have crucified their flesh. You no longer want to do these things. Why? Because you belong to Christ. He has sanctified you for himself. We belong to Christ. They that are Christ has crucified the flesh with the afflictions, with the affections and lusts. The effects is the things that you love, you gravitate to. He said, we crucified that. Crucified fornicate. You got to crucify it. You have to fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ more than you love fornicating. And when you fall in love with Christ more, you will love him more than you love smoking that dope. You will love Jesus more than you love getting high, drinking that liquor, getting drunk. Fall in love with Christ more, you love him more than being addicted to porn or whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. We crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. Lust is a terrible thing. But you are, if you belong to Christ, you crucified that. You put it on a cross and buried it. It is not going to resurrect. We have to subject ourselves to Christ. Amen. And if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. I know you might want to get heated, but somewhere, people, we have to stay in the spirit. We have to live in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. And be number 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Vain glory, because you want to look good. You want to be right. You want to be right. Vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let us stay away from these things. We got to have a part two to this message. But my point to let you know, it feels good when we sin. It feels good when we gratify the flesh. But God hates it. God hates it. He's not satisfied. And if you are in the flesh, you cannot, you will not, 
you do not have the ability. It's totally impossible for you to please God. I want to please him. I want God to be pleased with my life. I want him to. When I stand before him, I've been to enough funerals. People, is this not going to last much longer? We're going to die and we're going to face eternity. You will be alive for all eternity somewhere. And if you are a child of God, you believe in this book, you know and you believe by faith that you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to give an account for everything that we have done in these bodies. Everything, even every idle word that we have spoken, we should give account thereof in the day of judgment. Am I teaching, am, am I promoting fear? No, I'm promoting hope. Hope, my hope is in Christ. All of my hope is in Christ. And when I stand before him, I want him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. If you have never, ever, and I want him to say, enter you into the joy of the Lord. Enter in. If you have never trusted in Christ, now is a perfect opportunity. Even if you watch it online, it's a perfect opportunity right now to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that ever claimed to save you. No one else, Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, none of these people have ever said, never said, nowhere in their teachings say they are propitiation for your sins. They're an atonement for your sins. Only Christ. Only Christ. There's not any hope in the watchtower. No hope in Mary. There's no hope for afterlife for that. Who cares about some purgatory? It's not even in the Bible. No such place as purgatory. No such place. And we're not trying to come back. Oh, I'm going to come back as a bird, as a bumblebee. No, the Bible does not say that. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You need to be born again. You need to be born again. Just believe it by faith. If you will, just say a Prayer, simple prayer by faith and believe in your heart. Dear Lord, I come to you. I repent for all of my sins. I repent for my wicked ways. I repent for being in the flesh. I repent for being carnal, carnal in mind. I repent for the things I've done. I know that you are holy God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I believe that you came to earth you lived a sinless life and you died upon the cross for my sins, for the sins of the entire world. You died, you gave your blood, you sacrificed your life so that we can be righteous, so we can be holy, so we can stand before you and be justified. We thank you for justifying us with your blood. Thank you for paying that price. I believe that you were buried in a tomb when you died upon the cross, you were placed in a tomb. I believe that you were in that tomb and you rose again from the dead on the third day. I believe that you rose from the dead, that God rose you from the dead. I believe it in my heart. I thank you. Receive me. Save me, Lord Jesus. Save me. I don't look for some feeling, some kind of sign, some type of jolt or anything. I do it by faith. I believe it by faith. And if you have prayed that prayer, just say, Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me for my sins. Thank you for saving me. Give me the strength to make it public. Give me the strength, oh God, to stand on your word, to believe in your word, to believe you, to live for you. And I will do it. Help me to never be ashamed of you. Never be ashamed of your word. He would do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Somebody said one time, you, you're going to tell people that all you got to do is say a few words and they're saved. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10, 9 to 10, we confess it with our mouth, we believe it in our heart. Okay, the Bible says, any man confess on the name of Jesus Christ shall be saved. You have to do it by faith and you have to believe it. Because someone else can come and give you some smooth talking words that can talk you right out of it if you don't do it by faith. Anything I can talk you into, 
somebody else come and talk you right out of. But if it's sealed in your heart by faith, that settles it. <laughs> no man can talk you out of your salvation. And you need to get in a good church that teaches you the word of God. We welcome you to come to Christ Church. We're local. We welcome you to come here at Christ Church. We teach the word of God. We don't teach our own ideas, our own thoughts, opinions, philosophies. No. Sola Scriptura, the word of God. That's it. And Jesus Christ is the head of this church. Not me, not my wife, nobody. It's called Christ Church because Christ is the head of the church. It's named after Christ. He's the one that died. We can be free and we can be saved. Not me. Christ. It's Christ church. That's why we call it Christ church. It belongs to him. And also right now, we depend upon your financial support at Christ church. Please donate to Christ church. We can continue to come to this beautiful place. That God has provided once again. And he will continue to provide. But we need your support to continue the ministry. We want to be in our own place where we can eventually have our own building where you can come. You can come here right now. This is a temporary place, but we welcome you to come to Christ Church to worship with us. Please make your donations out to uh, Christ Church. Please go to the website, which is right under here. It's the Christchurch.com. Sow your seeds today. You're sowing on good ground. We're not telling you to give us $100 and God going to give you 1000 back. Those are lies, people. But you're sowing into the kingdom of God so we can continue to take this gospel to the world. We're not trying to buy houses and cars and jet airplanes. We're not doing that. We're giving you the word of God. Everything that I said today, you can find in your Bible. In the Bible. This is the word of God. It's the word of God, church. But we do need your financial support. So please send your support to Christ Church. And God, we bless you. We thank you so much. We thank you so much. And we're looking for new members to come worship here with us and to join in this local body. We are a group of people who love Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about. It's about loving him, being obedient to him, serving him, worshiping together, edifying the church, to build the church. Amen? That's it. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for worshiping with us. Father, we just give you praise. We thank you for this. Pray that we make it home safely. Praying, Father, for the hearts of the people watching the videos, watching, Father, online, that you may impart your spirit, Father God, that they may have new life, that they will hate the flesh, hate being carnal in mind, that we can be free. As Romans chapter 6 tells us, we are free from sin. Free from sin. Sin does not have dominion over us. We're in Christ. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for your word. And we thank you for a new day of life. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.